Hey there, welcome back to our channel and welcome to the series Behind the Image. This is a series where I love to take some of my favorite images from a wedding day and I break down the reason why I love it, the reason that it was great, and you get to see me actually shoot it behind the scenes. You also get to see me just break down what are the ingredients that go into making, in my opinion, a perfect portrait. Instead of just looking at an image and being like, oh, love that, beautiful, like, but why? Why do you love it? Because if you can understand and hear someone break down all the reasons why it's very pleasing to the eye, then when you're shooting, a lot of these things will come more natural as you compose and do your settings and find lighting and locations and you pose your clients. So I'm breaking it down to help you learn what made it great to begin with. Let's try to use a willow tree. Okay. Are you good? Okay. It's a little bright. Oh yes, we got some glow. Y'all can stand. Let's see. Maybe even like right about here. I think I can still get some glow in there. All right, let's see. Yep, facing each other. Dress is bustled, so it's not gonna float down the river. That's good. Um, okay, this is gonna be a wide shot. Hand in the pocket for Jesse. All right, if you want, let's do bouquet over the back again. You can hold on to his lapel. Sorry, I'm gonna come all the way down here. Guys, I, I just thought to myself, I probably will fall in this river, but it would be so worth it. All right, here, guys, all oh, the glow. This is what I dreamed of. Y'all can look at each other, you're smiling. Maybe even a forehead kiss if you want. Oh, hope, this is what you wanted. I don't even know what you wanted, but I know this is it. Gorgeous, y'all can share a real kiss. Hold on to jacket, you can dip her back just a little bit. Gorgeous, smiling, doing the laugh. You guys are so good at laughing at each other. Um, this is just the most perfect example of secondary light. Like you just can't get more perfect than this. Diffused, wide open in front of me. Some water to break up the green so there's like, you know, it's not all just green reflecting back up. The sun is a little bit in like some wispy clouds so it's not too intense. But it's enough to see like just speckles of like the glow from the green grass behind. It. It's just perfection. It's like my favorite type of light to shoot in. I will take this over a city wedding literally any day, any day. All right, here we go. So one more, lightly, lightly dip her back towards that hillside. I'm gonna do one more before our sun goes away. Here we go. Beautiful, you can share a kiss and you can relax. The reason why I think this portrait in particular is so beautiful, um, and that sounds funny to like talk about my work like that. Like it's just so perfect. It's not perfect, but it is beautiful. And I'm, it's the image that I went home most proud of from this day. Um, and I think there's a lot of things that make up the success of this image. So first of all, it, it, composition, right? So we're using, um, the rule of thirds. We're using really powerful negative space and our brains, um, our brains love to have um, a direction and a guide across an image. So our negative space is anything outside of them. Um, yes, there's a tree here, but the tree is so big and it's filling the frame so much and I'm cutting off the top of it that all of a sudden the tree now becomes a part of the negative space. It's not a part of the subject. So we just have our subject here and then everything else is negative space, which gives our eye, the smaller the subject and the more uh, strategically you place your subject within the sweet spot of the rule of thirds, the more easy it is for our brain to make sense of the image that we're looking at. And our brains like to have that visual break that points us to the subject. Now, if there had been a white fence leading from them across here with a little white bridge and it came all the way to this corner, now that would make our brains even happier because we'd have another lead line directing us to the client. So that could be a little bridge here. Maybe the bridge even connects over here. Um, that would make our brains happier. I, what I'm doing is I'm explaining, like there's a curve here that leads down to the couple. The tree kind of had some lines leading to the couple, but I don't really count those because it's broken up so much by the branches. But the point is the placement of the couple and the arrangement of the frame is what's making our brains like this. So the reason I'm explaining this is because there's such power in composition. There's a lot more that I could go into with that, but I'm gonna leave you with this. The composition is the key factor that I think plays a role. Now, there's a lot of other key ingredients that make this work. One, I think it's a little bit of a showstopper with light as well. So um, the sun is literally right here, but I actually, 
It's right there. I don't know why I said there. It's right there. Um, you can see it. It's blocked by that branch. Now, if I had stepped over just a little bit and the sun was peeking through this opening, this would be completely hazy. It wouldn't have pop. You wouldn't be able to see the contrast of the beard and the hair. It wouldn't look clean. The colors wouldn't look true to life because the haze would be overtaking the lens and you wouldn't have that natural contrast. So, um, that's one piece of lighting that's a key ingredient is that the sun was diffused by this tree just barely right here, just barely, but enough to protect me and give me the pop that I love, the contrast that I love. I don't love haze. Um, haze can be beautiful, but when you have too much haze, you, you, you lose your ability to have dynamic highlights and shadows in, in an image because you're just overblown with the haze and, and the, and the highlights. And so, um, Something else that works really well in our favor is that all right here and all everything in the background is light and airy. So like we don't really have anything dark and heavy behind us. Um, the darkest part of the image is the trunk of the tree and the trunk of the tree. It's not even a bad thing. It adds great contrast, but it's not distracting. Now I want you to imagine if this whole part of the tree didn't have any leaves there and all you saw was like this really thick trunk trunk. It wouldn't ruin the image at all. But the reason why this looks so good is because this tree has enough coverage to where the trunk is not overbearing. So that's a simple thing. I know that doesn't seem like much, but the fact that we have these leaves that are, uh, or these branches that are hanging down, kind of blocking us from the heaviness of that tree trunk, that's huge. If you are a photographer and you know that something is just missing from your work, you've got lighting, you're understanding posing, but like something is not clicking and you just don't know how to take your images to the next level. Chances are you're missing the power of composition. Amazing intentional composition is the most overlooked and underrated aspect of photography that no one's talking about. I've created a composition course. It's the last of the technical courses. It's gonna be the final piece to the technical suite in the KJ education space. I am so excited for photographers to get their hands on this course because you will learn tools and tips and systems to be able to look through your camera and frame your images in a completely different way. If you've never had a system for composition, this is going to change your work and change your business. I don't want you to miss this. Make sure you get on the wait list. You can find the link below. Um, the placement of the couple. So I want you to imagine if the couple was placed here. Would that have the same visual effect if it was framed the same way? No, it doesn't. Our, our eye doesn't like that because there's not enough lead up to the couple. So placing them here versus placing them here or having a lot of foreground um, below them, the way that they're framed is working in the rule of thirds. It's right at the sweet spot, right at this cross point. I consider this and this and this and this sweet spots when it comes to composition. And it's just, I find it fascinating. I don't know why our brains work like this, but almost, I, I mean, I haven't done the studies of, of neurological development, but most human beings all prefer their brain, the way the, the visual, um, the way that their brain processes things visually, we all prefer to have subjects that land in one of those four quadrants. Um, so we've got composition work in our favor. We've got lighting working in our favor. We have diffused lighting. We have glow. We have a clean background. We have branches that are covering up some of the heaviness of the tree trunk. Last but not least, this is the key ingredient to this photo. If you don't have this, you wouldn't be able to capture this the way I did. It's secondary light. If, if you don't know what secondary light is, the Lighting and Location course, it's our all-time best-selling course. Thousands of photographers have said it's the course that actually made them turn a corner when it comes to their shooting and understanding light. When you look at this photo, there is an invisible light source. This sounds like I'm talking about magic, <laughs> but there's an invisible light source that makes this photo what it is. And what I'm talking about is in front of them. So back from where I was shooting, it was a wide open field, wide open. The cool part is that because it's wide open and that tree is so large, then everything in front of them here, all of this grass is not this type of light. It's, it's in the shade. So we don't have a color casting issue because in front of them is wide open. We had tons of available secondary light to compensate for the glow and the, and the backlighting that was already happening. Um, and we don't have harsh grass that's like reflecting that really bright light to put green color cast, uh, green color casting on their skin. So that invisible secondary light, that is really the powerhouse. Like that 
is the ingredient that matters the most because if like right here, there was another tree, right? That was slightly in front of them with some really, really pretty leaves. Then all of a sudden I'd have to make sure that there was enough available secondary light access to the sky. There was enough open right here to expose. And I guarantee you, if you zoomed in, I guarantee you there would be pieces of her in the shadow of him that started to look a little green, a little bit yellow because they, there wasn't an abundance of secondary light. The fact that this image was shot in a place that doesn't have any other trees in front of me. It doesn't have any building behind, no barn back from where I was shooting. It's literally just an open field. That is what makes this so beautiful. So um, we've got composition, we've got simple background, we've got diffused backlighting, we've got access to secondary light, and it does help also, I think, that they're wearing great colors. So sometimes a bride can be wearing stark white and a stark white dress photographs blue. Sometimes the groom will wear a, a black tux, which is super classy. I, I prefer bow tie weddings. I love the way that looks, but here it gives a different vibe that he's wearing a light blue suit. Um, so I think that all works in our favor. I think what could have been a little bit uh, even more visually appealing is if I had backed up a little further. I don't know if you can see this right here, but I can tell. See right here, there's like these reeds sticking up. Uh, if I wanted to make this a little bit more advanced composition, I would have backed up a little bit and squatted down a little bit lower and found an opening in those reeds so that I had a layer of foreground as well as beautiful background, middle ground, subject lines. So um, yeah, I think uh, another thing, this is little, but the fact that the water isn't completely blown out, you can tell it's like a babbling brook. I think that's helpful. The reason why it's not overexposed is because there's such diffuse backlighting right here. So I love this image. This was the biggest, widest shot that we took before the sun slipped away. And then we went up the hill and it was like completely gone by then. Uh, this is the shot where I started. I think I started, even if I did it afterwards, like I started a lot closer or I went a lot closer and I could just tell like the pulled back shot is where it was. Like that was the magic spot. So I'm thankful that I had the thought of like, okay, let's use the 28 to 70, which I'm all already using. Um, and let's pull back and really get like the grand view of this. Now I shot another wedding in the last couple of years where I took a really beautiful willow tree shot as well. But this type of pulled back shot wasn't possible at that wedding because behind that willow tree, there were a bunch of like houses on a golf course. And you'd be able to see like these houses built in like 1998 that just aren't, you don't want those in the back of portraits. The reason why this was such a great opportunity is because um, this tree and the background, everything was just so clean. It was like a perfect setup for a portrait. If I had had more time, I would have done everything here. I would have called the bridal party and maybe not that, but I, I would have done everything here because this is like the picture perfect setup. So if you think, man, I need more of this in my life. I like seeing behind the scenes. I like learning from like real life examples, not styled shoots that aren't even real and you can do whatever you want with it. If you want to learn from real life, there are thousands of photographers that watch me shoot weddings, portrait sessions, engagements every single month. There's 300 plus episodes that you could dive into today and it's less than a couple cups of Starbucks coffee. So that link for KGL Access, it's our membership for photographers. I coach, I do a coaching call every single month live. You can ask me your questions if you have them live. A lot of them are business questions. Some are technical, but it's a great conversation every month and I'd love to have you on that Zoom call. So look at the link below, dive in there and like and subscribe so I can see you next time. Bye. Bye.